Um, that's one reason why I'm recording it is because some people's internet I know cuts in and out. That way, if I create the video, you'll have another opportunity to go back and watch it. So what we are going to do today is we are going to learn to factor quadratics where our A term is one. So basically we're gonna to learn to factor quadratics that look like x squared plus bx plus c. What it means for me to factor something from standard form, so factoring from standard form, is going to turn my quadratic into intercept form. When we did our warm-up problems today, every single one of my warm-up problems, the answers to them started with a variable squared. So what we're going to learn to do is we're going to learn to take those answers that we got from the warm-up problems and turn them back into the questions that we had for the warm-up problems, that type of process. So the first thing I want to do is we're going to review the multiplication of factors, and we're going to see what we're going to get, okay? So I am <clears throat> I'm going to put an X plus, I'm going to call this letter J, no, J, K, L, we'll call it M. And I'm going to multiply it times X plus N. I'm just going to do this generic math, where X is going to be my variable. Pretend like M and N are numbers, and I'm just going to multiply these things out. And I'm actually going to do the longhand multiplication, and then we're going to discuss this, because it gives us a pattern. So the first thing I do when I multiply is I'm going to multiply this n times each term up on top. So n times m is m n. Then n times x is n x. Then I'm going to multiply this x by each term on the top. Okay, the x times m is m x. And then the x times x is x squared. And if there was no signs, that means they're positives. So I'm just going to rewrite this. Both of these terms have an x in them. So what I could actually do is rewrite it as x squared plus n plus m times x plus m, n. The shortcut that I gave you last week for multiplying two binomials together where the um, number in front of the x's on both of them was one, I told you to write the letter squared, add the two numbers together, multiply by the letter, plus the two numbers multiplied together. That's where that comes from. So what we're going to be doing today, hopefully this is a review for most of you, is we are going to be looking for two numbers, m and n, that multiply to the last term in my quadratic and that add to the middle term of my quadratic. So we're going to be looking for two numbers that multiply to the last term that add to the middle. Two numbers that multiply to the last term and that they add to the middle. Okay. We are starting out with the easiest ones where the term in front of the x squared is one. Um, and then later on, depending upon how we do on this today, Maybe on Thursday, we'll do it with x equals 1. I don't know about that yet. I'm still debating in my head. So I'm going to do some examples. Okay. 
So what I'm doing is I'm doing the non-assigned homework problems on your sheet. I'm gonna be doing that far right-hand column. So this is three. Six is x squared minus two x minus eight. Eight, no, not eight, nine. is x squared minus nine, and that, that'll take us into a, a new teaching topic here. So what I'm looking is for two numbers that multiply to the last number that add to the middle. Most math teachers have you set up a little crisscross thing here, where I wanna find numbers that multiply to eight and that add to six. Somebody in chat, tell me what two numbers multiply to eight and add to six. Two and four. Okay. So, yep, I've got all those. It does not matter whether you do the two and the four if they both have the same signs. So your answer is x plus two times x plus four. Okay, so we are just finding those two numbers and then we're writing x with whatever the two numbers we have. So let's do the second one in chat. Two numbers that multiply to a negative eight that add to a negative two. Two numbers that multiply to negative eight that add to a negative two. I will tell you, in order to multiply to get a negative, one of them has to be positive, one of them has to be negative. I just need to know. So negative 16 times eight is not negative two, is not negative eight. The only way I can get negative eight by multiplication is one times negative eight, two, two times negative four, four times negative two. Yep, it's the negative four and two. So I'm just gonna write down exactly what I have here. I'm gonna write down x plus two times x minus four. Let me look down that column, see if there's any more non-special ones there. Yep, I'm going to do number 18 next before I get into the special rules. So 18 is x squared minus 8x minus 15. Same thing in chat, two numbers that multiply to a negative 15 that add to a negative eight. Multiply to negative 15 that add to negative eight. A negative five and a three. Wait a second here. Did I copy the problem down right? It's negative eight minus 15, sorry. Yeah, so negative five. Negative eight X minus 15. I think there may not be a way to factor this. So to get a negative 15, it's one times negative 15. It is three times negative five. 
and it is five times negative three. This one has no, um, I can't factor. I need to read your directions. It says factor the expression. If the factor cannot be expression, say so. So this one cannot be factored. So don't fall into the trap just because I give you a standard form that you can factor it. We are going to find out some other tools later this chapter that I can look at it right off the bat and tell me I can't factor it. So this one, yep, the, the numbers you gave me were good guesses, but then go back and check to make sure the multiplication worked, but the addition didn't. So next thing I want to do is I want to talk about if the first and last terms are perfect squares. So if I start out with a quadratic whose first and last terms are perfect squares, where this last term is something squared, we're going to come up with a pattern for that. Or if it's just a binomial that has a subtraction sign, we'll have a pattern for that. Okay, and this middle term can have a plus or a minus with something X here. So I'm going to do the right-hand one first. We saw this pattern when we were doing the multiplication on the warm-up questions. This one I call the difference of square patterns. Of squares. And what I mean is if I have from the warm-up, this was the answer to one of the warm-up questions. It is the square root of the first plus the square root of the last times the square root of the first minus square root of the last. So it's the square root of the first plus the square root of the last times the square root of the first minus square root of the last. That only works if you have two terms and the second term is being subtracted. Can somebody please type the two factors for x squared minus 64 into chat? Following that pattern. There we go. X plus 8, X minus 8. This even works if you have a number in front of the X squared and it's a perfect square. Square root of the first plus square root of the last. Square root of the first minus square root of the last. So if you have two things that are perfect squares, that's a way you can get your answer. I will tell you, it even works if the right-hand number is not a perfect square. I'm going to do this one in blue. X squared minus 5. As long as you have a subtraction sign you can still follow this rule. X plus the square root of the last times X minus the square root of the last. So anytime you have something squared 
minus a number, you can always use that difference of square patterns. Okay, this difference of square patterns works even with just plain old numbers. This is 20 plus five times 20 minus five. So it's the first term squared minus the last term squared. So in middle school, when I first learned about this difference of square patterns, um, that's how I was able to start learning how to multiply some of these two digit numbers together a lot quicker than my other classmates. Are there any questions on difference of squares before I do the terms in it? I've only got 10 minutes, so hopefully I can get through that. Okay. X squared plus something X plus some other something that's a square. Okay. This is the reverse of the binomial square thing. A binomial squared is a trinomial. The first term is the first term squared. The last term is the last term squared. The middle term is two times the product. So what we are going to try is if you have a trinomial where this first term is squared and the last term is something squared, we're gonna try to do it in the form of x plus the square root of the last. So we're gonna do the square root of the first, square root of the first, square root of the last, Copy that sign, the second, all squared. We're going to try that. It will automatically give us the first number and the last number if I multiply them out. What may be wrong is the middle number. So we're going to have to go back and check the middle when we're done. So for one like that, x squared minus 2x plus 2. So I just follow the words. I take the square root of the first, square root of the last. Oh, two's not a perfect square. There we go. I take the square root of the first, I take the square root of the last, I copy the sign, and then I go all squared. Now what I wanna do is I wanna see if it actually was a perfect square. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two, I need to check this middle term. All I'm gonna do is take two times that negative two and it should have been a negative four. So that is not the factorization. So I did the first one to show you that not always am I going to be able to um, use that difference, use that perfect square rule. This one right here is not factorable. I don't know if it's an I or an A. Now I'm gonna give you ones that are factorable. First term's a perfect square. The last term is a perfect square. The key thing you can tell if it's gonna follow the pattern is this middle number is two times the square root of the last term. Okay, so that's the way you can tell it's gonna work. So I'm gonna do the square root of the first, square root of the last, copy the sign, all squared. Square root of the first, square root of the last, copy the sign, all squared. When you are doing these problems, if you're by yourself, say the words out loud. If you got somebody else around you that's gonna think you're totally insane, say the words in your head. Every time I do these problems, I, um, I actually say the words in my head. Okay. 
Again, the last term has to be positive for this pattern to work. So it's square root of the first, square root of the last, copy the sign, all squared. And two times negative two is in fact negative four. Square root of the first, square root of the last, copy the sign, all squared. And seven times two is in fact 14. So those are our three basic patterns that we have for factoring. So I'm having you guys do the left two columns of the sheet. Let me go back to the instructions. You are doing 1 to 38, the left two columns, and then 40 and 41. There are a lot of homework problems on here, and the reason why is you need the practice. Okay? So right now, I need you, for your homework, I only need you to be able to get done 1 through 17, the left two columns. Um, I am, uh, the other groups, I'm going to talk about those in class on Thursday because I have not told you how to solve once you've factored, and I've not told you how to find the zeros once you've factored. So for right now, I'm going to change that assignment. I'm going to change this to homework 113A, and it's going to be 1 to 17 left two columns. And I'm going to stop the recording. And ask 